Hello world, new leaks have emerged which reveal how advanced spyware being sold to governments is apparently being used by dictatorial regimes to target journalists and activists. These are actually really quite shocking developments. If you care about your privacy and security in the slightest, this video is a must watch. It's a complex topic, but I've done my best to distill it. This is one of the more important things I've covered on this channel. As such, it's the only thing I'm going to be covering in this episode of The Week Web, where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. The Israeli company NSO Group, a billion dollar corporation which Wikipedia quite fittingly describes as a cyber arms firm, is at the center of the drama. They make spyware. As of 2020, they've got more than 500 employees working day in and day out trying to hack these things mobile phones. NSO focuses almost exclusively on trying to find vulnerabilities in iOS and Android devices, simply because our phones are the perfect surveillance tools. They have a microphone, camera, they know where we are, what we're doing at all times, and have access to both our communication in real time and logs of past messages. Not only this, but the spyware NSO develops is incredibly advanced. Zero-click attack vectors are NSO's speciality. Their spyware has the ability to infect your phone simply by sending you a text. Protecting yourself from this malware isn't a case of don't open suspicious emails or click dodgy links. No, you can become a victim simply by receiving a malicious text message laden with nasty code known as a zero-click exploit. Designated as such because it requires no user interaction to execute, the malware could then just delete the offending text so you'd have no idea you were ever targeted. NSO packages vulnerabilities like this into a spyware tool called Pegasus. Once installed, Pegasus can listen to your device's microphone, peep through your camera, receive saved files, meander through your messages, and so on. You think you're secure because you use Signal, which employs fancy end-to-end -end encryption? Not so fast. End-to-end -end encryption is largely irrelevant once Pegasus is installed on your device. But Satonic, surely these hacks are only ever used on terrorists and criminals, right? Right? Well, the new leaks confirm that Pegasus is often sold to countries of dubious moral standing. This is where the problems begin. NSO claims this spyware is sold to governments on the proviso it should only be used to fight crime and terrorism. Their website's homepage bears the phrase, Cyber Intelligence for Global Security and Stability. Let me tell you why that's a little ironic. The recent investigation, coordinated by Forbidden Stories with technical support of Amnesty International Security Lab, details how, according to them, 50,000 phone numbers were potentially targeted using Pegasus spyware. These include heads of state, activists, and journalists, including Jamal Khashoggi's family. If you're not familiar with Jamal Khashoggi, he was an Arabian journalist who often said things the Saudis didn't quite like following which he was then assassinated in Istanbul and quite literally cut up into little pieces by Saudi operatives. All the while, Pegasus spyware was allegedly being used to spy on his family. The allegation is that NSO's Pegasus spyware aided in executing his assassination, a claim NSO flatly denies. Countries which have been uncovered to have contracts with NSO to use Pegasus include Saudi Arabia, surprise, surprise, Bahrain, Azerbaijan, the UAE, among others. This list of countries looks small until you realize these are only the ones we know about. NSO sells to a total of 40 unnamed countries. One common vector of zero-click exploits that Pegasus uses to propagate itself is via iMessage. The CTO of threat analysis company Vectra says that the iOS message service is a bit of a mess from a security perspective. Problem being, as Apple adds more features to iMessage, it comes with the cost of increasing the overall attack surface for bad actors. More features equals more potentially exploitable bugs. He says, accepting and processing messages from anyone is the equivalent of running a network connected to the internet with no firewall. Apple was forced to release a statement on the situation. You can pause it and read it in full, but they essentially say that they're not a fan of governments hacking journalists and that they're trying to make iOS more secure. And so themselves creeped out of their evil lair to make a statement on these findings. They claim that the report by Forbidden Stories is full of wrong assumptions and uncorroborated theories. Their sources have supplied them with information which has no factual basis, as evidenced by the lack of supporting documentation for many of their claims. NSO is correct when they refer to the lack of supporting documentation. Though in a bid to protect their sources, it's no surprise that Amnesty and Forbidden Stories aren't going to be very forthcoming with details on where from which they procured the leak. They go on to say, the claims that the data was leaked from our servers is a complete lie and ridiculous, since such data never existed on any of our servers. 
Here, they're referring to the claim that 50,000 phone numbers were targeted with Pegasus spyware. And to be fair, I would like to see some kind of rough explanation on how that number of 50,000 victims was derived. I don't know how the Pegasus malware operates, obviously, but it's not hard to believe that there is no central server and each Pegasus customer operates their own instance of the Pegasus malware. In which case, it's not immediately obvious how Amnesty came to the conclusion that 50,000 people were targeted. That being said, 50,000 victims wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. In yesteryears, to surveil someone meant having to send a guy armed with binoculars in a car with tinted windows to follow someone around. Whereas with Pegasus, you can surveil someone's every move with the push of a button. The conversation of is it really worth dedicating resource to surveil someone is over. Accusations of enabling unlawful surveillance aren't new to NSO. As of 2019, WhatsApp is suing NSO on the basis Pegasus exploited a vulnerability in WhatsApp to send malicious messages to roughly 1,400 mobile phones, with the intent of installing Pegasus malware on the devices of journalists, human rights activists, political dissidents, and diplomats. In an apparent attempt to clear up their image, last month NSO released their first Transparency and Responsibility report, in which they claim since 2016 they've cancelled the contracts of five customers due to human rights concerns, costing them in excess of $100 million and lost revenue, and that they've refused to even sign contracts worth in excess of $300 million as a result of their human rights due diligence procedure. I'm not too sure what to make of this report. It reads quite well, but actions speak louder than words, and the evidence shows us that despite any efforts NSO may be making to clean up, it ain't enough. Before we get to what you can do, if anything, to prevent yourself from falling victim to spyware, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, Linode. VPNs are useful and help to keep you private and secure, but they come with a trove of issues. Mainly, would you entrust a VPN company with your traffic over your ISP? The bottom line is that if you didn't set up a VPN server yourself, you really can't be sure these VPN companies won't keep logs, sell your data, or monitor your traffic. That's why I've teamed up with Linode to give you the opportunity to host your own private VPN for free. Linode is a totally customizable cloud hosting platform with a whole host of server apps you can install with one click. Using their WireGuard or OpenVPN app, you can spin up a private VPN controlled wholly by yourself in a matter of minutes. Linode launched way back in 2003. That's three years before AWS was even a thing. Linode doesn't spend a second on side hustles like grocery chains or reading you bedtime stories. Cloud computing is what they do best and is their only focus. Linode is offering all of you guys $100 in free credit just for signing up. Use your $100 to instantiate your private VPN or literally anything else cloud computing related. They have 24 seven phone support, which is a godsend in the world of servers, so you'll never be left out in the cold. Go to linode.com slash satonic or click the link in the description to claim your free $100. I know what you're thinking, so Satonic, what to do? On an individual level, there's not much you can do. The age-old advice of steering clear of dodgy looking links is superfluous when governments armed with zero-click exploits can ensnare you with nothing but your phone number and a simple click of the mouse. However, there have already been some actions against NSO in the wake of these accusations. Firstly, Amazon, having come to the conclusion that having anything to do with NSO is a PR disaster in the waiting, has banned NSO from using Amazon Web Services indefinitely, shutting down NSO's account with them. Israel themselves have launched a review into whether rules on Israel's export of cyber weapons, such as Pegasus, should be tightened. It's too soon to say if this actually means anything or if this action is just an attempt to make it look like they're doing something. But even if Israel tightens the rules, no doubt some other country with more lax laws will fill the gap in the market. The demand from authoritarian regimes for this kind of spyware exists and that's not going to change. No doubt this isn't the last we'll hear of NSO's Pegasus. I'll be sure to cover any developments in upcoming episodes. Make sure to let me know in the comments what you think of this whole saga. If you enjoyed this kind of video, make sure to help me out by tapping the like button for the YouTube AI, as well as turning on those sub notifications. If you're looking for something to watch next, go check out my previous video on how malicious hackers were caught hiding credit card details in images. If you get a lot of value from this series of videos, do consider becoming a channel member. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.